Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I would like to thank to um, all the team of uh, AWE, um, uh, and especially to, to Ori Inbar uh, for this perfectly organized event. It's really cool. Uh, and thank you all for being here. Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, augmented reality and the service of uh, tourism market. Uh, thank you. It does, this one is the last one. Okay. Right. Good. Um, now, I'm here to uh, encourage everybody who develops augmented reality applications uh, to go for this market, for tourism market, because it has a lot of potential. And uh, I will uh, start with explaining you some pillars uh, in which uh, this encouragement ba is based. So the first of, of them is obviously uh, that a man without a history is like a tree without roots. So, uh, so much history around us, so many uh, sites to see, and uh, they are barely more than uh, just ruins. Now, augmented reality uh, gives the possibility uh, to anyone who comes to these kind of places uh, to have an, ex an extra experience, uh, immersive experience, of see how this place looked like before. This is one of the pillars. And uh, another one is uh, the generation of pillars, meaning that uh, we are now at the moment when there are uh, three generations uh, coexisting, and uh, all of them are quite prepared for this uh, technological revolution that we are now living and experiencing. And uh, obviously, the most prepared are the Generation Z. Uh, they, are in, they are not uh, quite old yet uh, to have uh, this financial uh, capacity to, uh, uh, to travel and, uh, and to purchase this kind of services, augmented reality applications uh, and these experiences. Nevertheless, if we give them maybe two or three years, uh, they will. And this is the kind of, uh, of public that will not need any explanation of uh, how do you use a, a cardboard or a, a RVR viewer. You have to put your mobile phone inside. You have to uh, prior your uh, travel, uh, download an application. They will look for this content. Uh, Nevertheless, the Generation X and, and Y still have to be educated, and uh, this is why uh, we maybe will have the boom in this kind of services uh, in two, three years <clears throat> from now. Nevertheless, all of them, uh, they uh, share uh, something in common, and this is their smartphone. And this is why I think that uh, uh, from Pilgrim, uh, this exactly what we are doing, we are putting all our... Uh, all our um, attention to this kind of, uh, of uh, gadget, which is the most uh, commonly used by everyone uh, who travels. Yeah. Now, another pillar is the travel market itself. Uh, it is uh, one of the markets uh, with uh, constant growth uh, for the last 10 years, or so 4 or 5 percent. And uh, it is also uh, the one that makes more than one billion people uh, travel uh, yearly. And uh, it is also the market that, uh, uh, despite the problems uh, with terror attacks and uh, political problems or complications, um, doesn't really affect to outbound uh, tourism. Uh, so uh, I, I repeat myself, I encourage everybody who develop uh, augmented reality applications to enter this market because now it is the time. In two, three years, you will be the king <laughs> of this market. And uh, now, talking uh, already about the uh, augmented reality in, in tourism and the different directions that are uh, known uh, as of today, uh, we've discovered three of them. Uh, one of them is, uh, the two of them are quite uh, already known, uh, and uh, it is the uh, uh, applications that use uh, guided uh, tools uh, with augmented reality elements. Uh, and the other one is the one of uh, indoor museums. Mm, day by day, more and more museums will uh, implement uh, more and more augmented reality and virtual reality uh, tools to enhance the experience of travelers, of uh, sorry, of uh, 
um, visitors of museum. Uh, and the, the one that I especially would like to talk about today is uh, the augmented reality in outdoors. Uh, so I think this one is the direction that uh, is more difficult, obviously, because we are working with augmented reality in outdoors, and you know that it's not, it's not, good, it's not very uh, simple. But it is uh, the possibility to really preserve our cultural heritage and uh, give, uh, at the same time, educational and uh, uh, immersive experience, additional value to these tourists that are coming to a place where barely, barely some ruins left, or maybe nothing, just a bold field, and they have the possibility to, to see how this place looked like before. It is something that, um, uh, that we uh, intuitively are uh, expecting when we are com coming to, this, uh, to a place like that. So these are the examples of uh, the first two directions in augmented reality used in guides and uh, in uh, museums indoor. Uh, now, talking about uh, uh, outdoor, augmented reality in outdoor, uh, we have some historical uh, moments, uh, and I will share it with you. Uh, let's say officially the first, uh, the first uh, known uh, case of augmented reality using smartphone, on smartphone was an uh, iPhone 4 in 2010 by Mark René, and it was officially, uh, he, he, he rebuilt the Berlin Wall. And it's like a historical case of first users. Uh, nevertheless, obviously there were more users, not with smartphone. For example, in 2002, uh, there were uh, a very interesting project in uh, Greece uh, with participation of several European countries, uh, Archeoguide. Uh, but here, obviously, uh, there were no smartphone. The idea is exactly what I told before, uh, and uh, they did it. They did it, but obviously they looked like like a Terminator too, or something like that. So uh, now, uh, after all these years, we are really prepared to to make this uh, tourism revolution, revolution with augmented reality. Uh, we are exactly at the establishment stage of market, and uh, it's a big blue ocean there. And uh, I mean, we are working, for example, Pilgrim work, works in, in Europe. Uh, you guys can work in the United States. There are no ruins in the United States, but they, they are, there are a lot of places where you can uh, just uh, on a bold field uh, recreate uh, a kind of uh, battle or historical event. Uh, it, has, it, has to, it hasn't to be uh, something in ruins. I mean, um, so, in terms of users, um, normally now you have an augmented reality application which is installed in your smartphone or tablet. Uh, you can enhance the experience with uh, some simple uh, gadgets like uh, Google Cardboard or uh, like or uh, VR, AR um, a viewer. Or you can go to, uh, to uh, glasses that we saw today, for example, which is not the cheapest way, but anyway, it, it can be used li like that also. Uh, here I would like to tell you some curious sto story about uh, how VR is trying to be AR. <laughs> because normally VR would be used for um, experience when you are not actually traveling to the place, uh, as we saw uh, before in, in, in the other presentation. Um, so you, you just use VR application to, to, to travel without traveling physically. And here you have the case of a French company, which, which I liked a lot, uh, because what they did is uh, they, they used this, um, uh, this typical uh, uh, binoculars that you can find uh, to uh, to see how I don't know the, the landscape, and they they did it like a point two, uh, so you can actually immerse yourself in virtual reality and the actual place, <laughs> and it is 360 reconstruction. It's a good idea. Uh, anyway, I think the AR is better here. But anyway, I, I have to tell you to, to tell you about it because I think it's a, it's a smart idea too to compete with augmented reality. Uh, now, in terms of sales strategies of augmented reality in tourism uh, uh, in outdoor reconstructions, uh, we have the online and the, and the offline, the on-site. The online is still difficult because, as I told you before, uh, the, really the, 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 the generation uh, which we need, the core one, uh, is still need to, to, to have two or three years to be really the, 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 main, uh, the main consumer. So online, because of uh, lack of users' education, they, they, I mean, how many of you, were, before traveling, 
consult uh, Google uh, Play or uh, App Store to see if there is any application in augmented reality that will give you the experience of seeing the place how it looked before. Anyone? Wow. That's good. <laughs> One. So this is the problem. The, the user, they are not yet educated. And we have to do it. And the only way to do it is enter the market if, and, and start working and start of offering that. And the other one is the on-site uh, promotion, meaning that when the users come to actual place, they have the possibility to, to find this kind of uh, services. One of them could be a renting model, just using a tablet uh, and the application inside, already prepared. The other one could be guided uh, using smart uh, glasses, uh, Google-like. Um, and the other one is like souvenir-like, meaning that you can buy uh, this kind of uh, cardboard uh, branded uh, or uh, uh, AR, VR viewer branded and uh, offer them as a souvenir. Okay. It doesn't work now. Or, yes. Um, and offer them as, as a souvenir uh, to the tourist. So they, will have, they would have, the tourist would have the uh, two products in one. First is the, uh, the, the, gog the goggles uh, that he or she could use uh, not only on site but also at home. And second, the application, which is included, included. So when you buy the glasses, you can download the application, use it there in augmented reality. For example, in Pilgrim, we do also VR. So when you come back home, you can see the same place in VR. So it's both uh, services and uh, enhanced. Now, in terms of technical difficulties, uh, obviously there are problems with correct positioning in outdoor. Uh, uh, those who work with augmented reality I don't have to explain it to you uh, because there is a changing environment. Uh, obviously, yes, also there are some quality uh, issues of, uh, for visualization. And also the other problem is that not, anyone, not any smartphone is perfectly prepared for, um, uh, for, AR, uh, for AR applications. Uh, normally, there are some solutions, and uh, each company uh, looks for its solution. We, um, I think, at, at Pilgrim, we, we had uh, we had the we had the deal, and we, we we have the solution to these three problems. Now, uh, in terms of locations, uh, you may think that uh, the location have to be a big location, Rome. Uh, New York, I don't know, something very big because there are a lot of people, there are a lot of uh, tourists uh, coming there. But actually it, it's not, it doesn't have to be big and this is why I'm telling you that uh, really the market is so big we can, we can every, everybody can, can work on it and we will not compete still. Because uh, this one is uh, a case uh, that was our first work uh, in 2014 when our startup uh, arose. Um, and it was done in a small European country, in Latvia, in a very small location in Ludza, uh, re very regional, very lo lo uh, local. We did a, a, a great uh, work and, um, and collaboration with the administrations. And, uh, well, as you see, we had uh, a very big number, 60,000 tourists just, uh, uh, just coming for that. And also uh, the tourist flow for this region uh, uh, had rose uh, about 30% uh, plus and, 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 and is still uh, maintaining at the same level because uh, obviously uh, you have to have a very good collaboration between administration or local uh, authorities uh, and uh, your project. And as I told you before, you don't need uh, to have ruins to work on. This one is the project uh, that we did in St. Petersburg in a very famous place, but there is nothing on this place. Uh, it's just a bald field uh, and an obelisk. And uh, so what we did is basically reconstruct the whole, the whole place. Uh, a famous battle took place there. Uh, and even have, uh, you, you even have the possibility to see how uh, an air battle with, uh, with planes, etc. Um, and uh, I would like to finish with, uh, with these words of every man can transform the world uh, from one of monotony to one of excitement and adventure. And I think that uh, this is the role of augmented reality and this is something that you can do, uh, everybody who works for augmented reality. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you liked it.
And uh, if you have some uh, additional information, uh, facts, etc., uh, this presentation is, a hu is, uh, is, is, is alive. I mean, I, I will be very um, excited to introduce more information in this, in this presentation uh, that you, th you consider could be interesting. Okay? Thank you very much.